Alistair Begg is a well-known and respected and loved Bible teacher and pastor, but people are kind of kicking off about him at the minute because in September 2023, he was on a podcast being interviewed, and in the podcast, he talked about how he had advised a lady to go to the wedding of her grandson, even though her grandson was marrying a trans person. So then, classic internet, people got a hold of this a few months later and are really, really cross about it, and they're saying, Alistair Begg has caved to the progressive, says it wolf in sheep's clothing, all this sort of nonsense, but... I actually want to defend Alistair Begg and now like if, if you're new here I'm really not woke at all, not progressive at all. On this channel I do cultural apologetics and Christian living and like you can check my videos I'm really not progressive but I want to defend first of all the fact that he did say this and then secondly actually Loki want to defend what he said but we'll get to that okay let's start by actually reading what he said this is a transcript of the conversation in the interview he's talking about what it means to live as followers of Jesus in light of the Sermon on the Mount and he said he gets questions like this he says my grandson speaking as this other person is about to be married to a transgender person and I don't know what to do about this and I'm calling to ask you to tell me what to do he says this is a huge responsibility and in a conversation like that just a few days ago and people may not like this answer but I ask, ask the grandmother does your grandson understand your belief in Jesus yes does your grandson understand that your belief in Jesus makes it such that you can't countenance in any affirming way the choices that he has made in life. Yes. I said, well then, okay. As long as he knows that, then I suggest that you go to the ceremony and I suggest that you buy them a gift. Oh, she said, what? She was caught off guard. I said, well, here's the thing. Your love for them may catch them off guard, but your absence will simply reinforce the fact that they said, these people are always what I thought. Judgmental, critical, unprepared to countenance anything. And it is a fine line, isn't it? It really is, and people need to work out their own salvation with fear and trembling, but I think we're going to take that risk. We're going to have to take that risk a lot more if we want to build bridges into the hearts and lives of those who don't understand Jesus and don't understand that he is a king. Okay, so that's what he said. We'll get to the content in a wee minute, but first of all, if on the off chance you are one of these people who are like, Alistair Begg is evil now and we hate him, first of all, let's remember that he is first and foremost your brother in Christ. He has faithfully preached the gospel and ministered to people for decades longer than I've been alive, probably longer than you've been alive. So let's not get caught up in the whole rage train and be like, oh, Alistair Begg, we hate him. Chill, okay? Let's let's be slow and patient about this because as James writes, human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Now, second thing I want to say is that Alistair Begg was actually really brave to say this. He admitted it. He's like, look, some people aren't going to like this answer. It would have been really easy for him to stand there and say, don't go to the wedding. No, it would be wrong for you to do that. And the, the following that he has would have respected that judgment and would have applauded him for it and said, oh, Alistair Begg's wonderful. He's saying what we believe. But actually, he was brave enough and bold enough to say something that he knew was going to be unpopular, but something that he thought was in line with the scriptures. I respect that. Now, whenever it comes to what he actually said, whenever you read it again, he doesn't affirm LGBT plus stuff. He actually clarifies with the woman. He says, okay, does your grandson understand that your belief in Jesus makes it such that you can't countenance in any affirming way the choices that he has made in life? So he's not affirming the LGBT plus lifestyle here. And then you think, okay, well, why then is he saying you should go to the wedding? And this is where we get to a really important distinction between what we believe and how we go about applying and practicing what we believe this is like a super super important difference and it's something that we don't always respect or recognize so whenever we see people doing something differently we assume that they believe something differently whereas actually that's not necessarily the case so here's an example whenever same-sex marriage was being discussed in terms of being made legal there were christians saying should this be legal should it not be legal do we have the right to legally impose our beliefs on people who don't believe our beliefs the bible is very clear on what marriage is but then should that be legally enforced that was a conversation that was being had some people said yes some people said no even though both people would have said okay that's not what marriage is or to make it a bit more applicable to something you might face let's say you have a friend who comes to you and says i'm gay okay you've got what the bible says about that and you've got okay here are the ethics of same-sex relationships but then how does that impact your relationship with your friend what does the friendship look like from that point if they get a girlfriend or a boyfriend do you meet the girlfriend or boyfriend these are hard questions and things that we're going to have to come up with answers to depending on how we read the scripture but 
coming from the same starting point of, okay, we know what the Bible says about same-sex relationships. We know what the Bible says about transgenderism. Now, thinking of Alistair Begg, I would imagine that over the years, he has counseled many, many people to not go to same-sex weddings, possibly on the basis that, okay, if you don't go, then they're gonna be curious about the strength of your conviction and what made you make that difficult decision. They might start to explore a little bit about faith. They might even come to repentance that is maybe the ideal scenario in what you think might hypothetically happen if you don't go to the wedding, but perhaps he's saying more often than not that it just leads to a breakdown of the relationship and then all of a sudden you've no gospel input into the life of that person or that couple. Perhaps you'd be preserving your own sense of holiness and your own reputation, but to the detriment of your ministry to those people. Maybe that's what he's saying and maybe that's what he's thinking about. So then whenever it comes to the wedding, you might say, okay, well, to go to the wedding is to show, I guess, support for the relationship and to affirm it before God. And look, maybe it does. Does it do that though to a greater extent than friendship with an LGBT couple would? I don't know. Should you refuse to be friends with LGBT couples? Well, no, clearly not. But then could your friendship be construed as affirmation as a question of the relationship? It maybe could. I don't think there's a clear cut answer to this, which is why it was really great actually that Begg said that we should work out our salvation with fear and trembling. That's Philippians 2.12. It's saying that we should work out how we go about living as Christians and how we apply this stuff in light of our fear of and honor of God and respect for him. I would add to that Romans 14 and 15 that talk about how if you believe something is sin and then you go ahead and do it, then that is sin for you because you've acted in a way that you think is sinful, so it's sin. That works for going to the wedding or not going to the wedding. You might feel it would be a sin for me to go to that wedding, but you might also feel it would be a sin for me not to go to the wedding. So personally for me, I'm gonna try not to judge people if I see them go to a wedding or not go to a wedding because I don't know their convictions. I don't know how much they've wrestled with this with God. Now look, this isn't to say that I definitely think Alistair Begg is right, but it's also not to say that I definitely think he's wrong. I don't know. This is complicated stuff. And in terms of that distinction with what we believe compared to how we go about practicing and living what we believe, there's a lot of gray there. The application of the stuff that we believe isn't always as obvious or straightforward as the beliefs that lead to the application. Now, look, I do think the Bible's really clear on sexuality and on gender. If you're doubting that, or if you're not really sure where you stand, here's one of those videos where I talk a little bit about that. So you might wanna watch that. Anyway, I'm curious to know what you think about it, whether you think Alistair Begg is right or wrong. If you disagree, be nice about it, please. He's your brother in Christ, as am I. Thanks for being here. See you in the next one. God bless.